the team, amazing job. Wow, what an empowerful song. Well, I have the incredible privilege of introducing our guest tonight, and really she's not a guest. She is part of this family. I remember being a little girl and being so inspired and encouraged by seeing a woman preacher, prophet, author. How many of you women are can testify to that? She has inspired thousands and uh, all over the world, not just in America, but has spoken to global leaders. And Pastor Colleen and I had an amazing privilege of attending her Deborah's United Conference in Dallas, and it was so powerful. So can you give a warm welcome, aloha welcome to Cindy Jacobs and Mike Jacobs. Hello. (laughs) Love you guys. Love you guys. Be seated quick. I'm in a hurry. I'm in a big hurry. Oh, so good to see you. Love you all. I see so many familiar faces that I've just seen forever here. I know tells you how old I am. Well, when you're in 70s, you know, you might as well brag about it. Uh, the Lord gave me a word when I was walking up to the church, when I was getting ready to just, uh, you know, go for the back door back here. And uh, it was about Lahaina and about people who have lost things in Lahaina. And I want to say to you, if you are your family, I know we're coming up on the one-year anniversary of the fire, uh, have had a loss, like financially, property, or a loved one, or anything, would you stand to your feet, please? I know we've all lost, certainly in our hearts, but the Lord gave me a word for you. And I just want to uh, share that word right now. The Lord said to me when I was walking up, he said, I am the God of the impossible. And the Lord said, showed me that there were things that were just tied up, that were tied up and, and uh, uh, you know, from your loss or maybe, maybe the Lord showed me that some of you, it just blew your family apart. It just blew family relations apart. But the Lord says, am I not a restorer? And the Lord says, I will restore the years the canker worm and the locusts have eaten up. And some of you even are in litigation, but the Lord says to you, I am the great judge of the universe. And so I am going to rule in your favor I'm going to rule in the midst, says the Lord. And the Lord says, there's some of you that it looks like it is impossible to rebuild. It is impossible, but the Lord says, am I not the God of the impossible, says the Lord. So the Lord says, I am fighting on your behalf in ways that you cannot see. And the Lord says, I see someone, literally, even recently, I don't know which it might have been more than one, but you have just been crying over this situation. Maybe it's getting near the year, but you've just been weeping. Who is that? You've just been crying. You, I see someone just weeping and weeping. And, and so I just, which one is it? Just really crying. Who is it? Come on. Be, fa- be, be real. You know, maybe you're watching online, but I'm sure there's somebody in this building. You've just been crying. Okay. Uh, oh, I see that. Okay, we see the little hand signal. Okay, you don't have to raise your hand. Made me look like a false prophet. Just made me look dumb that I'm up here working so hard to give you a word. And somebody's going like us over there. Okay. Anyway, well, Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, I praise you, Lord. We release our faith as family together in the name of Jesus for restoration. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you are going to do what only you can do. And I bind you, Satan, from destroying families. You have come to, I've never prayed about this, Abaddon the destroyer. I've never used that phrase, and I don't think in my life, but I say you will not destroy this family in the name of Jesus. Lord, put the family relations back together. I see cousins that are fighting with cousins. There's somebody, even it's a third cousin. It's a crazy situation. But the Lord says, watch and see what I will do. Now in the name of Jesus, we bind the robbing spirit 
that is trying to rob your family in the name of Jesus and even your future generations. And Father, I thank you. There's somebody, your family members are so mad at God because of this loss. You know, I mean, it's like they haven't completely turned away from God, that's you. They haven't completely turned away from God. Uh, will you get to that one who's, pray, who's, oh, there's a baby crying too. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God. Lord, right now, right now, Father, for bringing back their prodigals. The Lord shows me there were prodigals that were made through this fire. There were some that you do not believe God is good anymore in your family because this happened. There may be a you, but the Lord says, surely goodness and mercy will follow you. Come on, you walking online, watching online, all the days of your life, surely, Goodness, I just declare goodness is following you. Mercy is following you in the name of Jesus. Can you just put your hands together? Amen, amen. Love you guys. Wow, I can't believe it's been a year. I was here just right after the fire, but, but God is good. Let's say that God is good. God is good. You know, God has just been saying to me over and over, expect my goodness to follow you. You know, in fact, the word mercy there, mercy will follow you, is the same word in the Hebrew as compassion. The compassion of the Lord when you're hurting. The Lord is compassionate to you. The Lord cares. Even sometimes when he's dealing with us. One time when I was a young leader, yeah, you probably can't believe this, but I was very strong-willed. Now, now, I know, you can't believe it, but it's true, okay? And thank you for those who said, oh, that could never be, because Cindy's so transformed now. But I was very hard-headed. And, and uh, so one day, I just felt like, I mean, everywhere, I looked, God was dealing with me, dealing with my character, dealing with my emotions, dealing with my pride, you know, whatever it was. You know, sometimes in the middle of that, you can feel like the worst scum of the earth, you know, because God's dealing with you so much, and it's for your good, but at that moment, it doesn't feel good. Can I get an amen? Come on, don't give me that holy and loud look. You know this has happened to you. So anyway, and uh, so I was just going, oh, God, you know, I was thinking about all this. And the Lord said, well, Cindy, this is necessary for you, for your character. But then he said the sweetest thing. He said, but I care that it hurts. Wow. Wow. God cares when we hurt. You know, there's one attribute of the prophet. You know, I think I talked about this a little bit last year. I know I did, that we don't often see a manifestation. The prophet is to edify, comfort, uh, edify, exhort, but comfort. And I just feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit is here on us tonight. The comforter is here. And Father, I thank you for comforting us. Sometimes life is hard. I didn't hear a single amen. You have perfect lives. Let me rewind. Sometimes life is hard, and that's an amen. amen. But God is always good. Can I get an amen on that one, too? God is always, always good. Amen. Let's clap our hands. Let's clap our hands. Now. God also gave me a word about that property over there. Now, I remember when I prophesied that kings would buy that, but the Lord says that it's been tied up, but I'm getting ready to shake it loose. Because that property is useful to me, says the Lord. So therefore, I'm getting ready to open up permits. I'm getting ready to open up so that land is useful for the Lord. And the Lord says, didn't I say I'm getting ready to do some remodel? Didn't the Lord say I'm getting ready to do things a new way and a new wine way? And Pastor Josh and Pastor Shannon, Pastor Red here, uh, that's the war over that property, the new. 
That's the war. But the Lord says, you're going to see it break through. And the Lord would say, am I not going to shake some things up around here governmentally? And the Lord says, because my government, the government is upon my shoulders. And the Lord says, you are going to see what only I can do. I'm getting ready to unlock things that are closed. I'm getting to rearrange some things. And the Lord says, you're going to see this in Maui County on a level that is just going to surprise you. Because the Lord says, haven't I said this is a revival county? Haven't I said that the glory of God will be manifest? Him. Haven't I said that I have chosen you, that you are the apple of my eye? And the Lord says, when I come, who can stand against me, says the Lord? When I come, who can oppose me, says the Lord? For my will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come on, that's a rousing, rousing amen. Oh, I just felt something unlock in the heavens. I'm loving this service. Mike, do you want to say anything? <laughs> I, I keep trying to force him, but, you know. And then he goes, why didn't you ask me to say anything? I'm like, tell the truth, Jacob. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, I tried. All right. Are you ready? You're not ready? Are you ready? Okay. Now, I have to confess I didn't know it was Holy Spirit night, so I'm really glad I heard the Holy Ghost because I have the right message. And you're going to want to hear this message because this is a really good one. Tonight we're going to talk about something I love, power evangelism. Power evangelism. We're going to talk about faith for the supernatural. And I've just been feeling this tangible presence of the Lord as I've been preparing. I, I, I've asked God to do notable things here tonight. I've asked God to, to stir you up and change you and manifest his power through you. I have just uh, something uh, for you tonight that every one of you has come to receive something you never had before. Maybe you don't even know what you need to receive, but the power of God is going to come upon you, and God is going to do for you something greater, say greater, greater than you can imagine or dream. I've asked God to refresh you tonight, where you were tired, where you were weary, where you didn't want to go on. God is going to shake us up for his glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm loving you shouting with me and preaching with me. Oh, I knew I was at home. I knew I was home. All right. Power evangelism. And when God loses his anointing through you for others, and God does it supernaturally. You know, in the 80s, we talked a lot about power evangelism. Some of you weren't born yet. I know that. Don't remind me. But in the 80s, we talked about supernatural evangelism. And so we're going to start with the Bible because I'm a preacher, and that's important. Mark 16. <laughs> we'll begin with verse 15 and read down. He said to them, go. Say that. Go. Okay, this is our job, all right? This is our job. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Some people say they're not a preacher. Wrong. It didn't say every pulpit minister. It didn't say a few people. He said to them, go and preach the gospel where to every creature. I want to say, everyone, every day, everywhere. Three E's. Go everywhere. Imagine for Maui County to be saved. In order for Maui County to be saved, we need power evangelism. And I said, Lord, let it begin tonight and let it begin now. And I just prayed that God would begin with you and you watching online. We are supernatural and we are called to go and preach the gospel to every creature. And the Lord has just been speaking to me about three E's. Everyone, everyone.
everywhere, every day. Imagine if just all of you won one person to the Lord. This week, this would double. What if you won two people to the Lord? What if you won three people to the Lord? I want to say to you, God wants you to go everywhere to everyone every day. Say that with me. Can you remember? Everyone, everywhere, every day. Amen. Mike says it should be the three E's. Is that the right direction? Three E's? I don't know. You get the point. Okay. It says, these signs will follow those who believe. The word believe here is the same word as believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Okay, so none of you are exempt. Unless you're not saved, but we can remedy that by the end of the service. Okay, so don't worry about that. This is for you. In my name, look at the first thing they say. They will cast out demons. You know, we put that as the last thing. But in the scripture, it was the first thing. Some people say, ah, there aren't demons today. I don't know, darling. I've known some people that made me very sure there are demons today. But that's another subject. Okay. And they will speak with new tongues. Okay, this is all important. Why? It empowers us. Acts 1, 8, you will receive what? Power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The word power here and power evangelism is the word dunamis. It means like dynamite. Dynamite. We can explode and expel. I tell you, God is calling you to bring the atmosphere of heaven with you everywhere you go, to everyone every day. They will speak with new tongues, and they will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hands, come on. We all have hands. Whoa, there's a lot of power in this room. There's enough power to change Maui County in this room. There's enough power to change Hawaii. There's enough power to change Tahiti. There's enough power to change Alaska. There's enough power for the United States of America to have a powerful move of God. I want to say God wants us to demonstrate his power. You know, recently... Uh, the Lord actually spoke to my husband, and my husband spoke to me that I should reread this book called Christ the Healer. Now, I know I had the old school copy, but I like to write in books. Hey, anybody read this book, Christ the Healer? Okay, a little homework available in Kindle and Audible, okay? Only you can't write on Audible. But Christ the Healer by F.F. F. Bosworth. F.F. F. Bosworth was part of the Voice of Healing movement. The Voice of Healing movement was started by a guy named Gordon Lindsay, who was the founder of Christ of the Nation's Bible School. And Bosworth used to preach there in Dallas, Texas, in case you didn't know where I'm from. I don't know what the thing is. I don't even think I have an accent. But this whole week, people are saying, where are you from? I would have guessed somewhere in the South. You know, yeah, I said Southern India, you know, but <laughs> no, it's, it's Texas. It's Texas. You have to learn this in case you visit the church in Dallas so you understand how to, how to um, know what the people are saying, you know, so you can learn with me here tonight. And so anyway, I've been rereading this book, and one thing that, that Robert Bosworth, his son, of F.F. F. Bosworth said, who used to do incredible tent meetings uh, in Dallas near the, the state fair, fairgrounds in Dallas. And uh, one thing his son said is, you know, we talk about we need revival and reformation. We need to reform our nation. We need to reform our cultures. You know, we need to bring the Bible into education. We need to bring the Bible into government. We need to bring Bible into every part of our society. And I'm not saying we don't have religious freedom, but I'm saying that, you know, that this is what we are called to do as believers. And uh, so, you know, what, what, what the sons, uh, Robert Bosworth said was that we need a reformation of the supernatural power of God back to the church. A reformation. In other words, we have got to see Christ formed in us and the Holy Spirit formed in us. You know, I, I know the Holy Spirit's in me. 
I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. But I don't know, you know, and I know I'm called to manifest the power of God. I try to everywhere I go. But I felt like I needed to more, be more active in recognizing the Holy Spirit to me personally. I don't think, so, I mean, this is what I'm doing. I'm getting up in the morning, and I've been doing this for about a week, and I'm saying, good morning, Holy Spirit. What do you want to do today? Woo, that's good. Come on, try it. You'll like it. You know, and I have just seen so much activity, Holy Spirit activity, just from acknowledging him. Remember, he's God. He's not a lesser God, right? He's God. And so I've just asked him to be very active in my life. And I've been studying on healing again. The Lord showed me, and I was sharing this with pastors uh, Josh and Colleen the other night. And you know what it is if you have dinner with the preacher before they preach, you're going to hear something of their sermon. I know I, God bless you, you know, hasten. I think you had to listen to a little of it too. But anyway, the, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me that, that, um, uh, that, I need to be more active and aggressive in believing for myself. Okay? Now, can I talk to people that are maybe aging a little bit? All right? We want to age gracefully. Some of you 20-year-olds are a little beat up. Can I say that? Okay. All right. So, anyway, (laughs) I'm not naming names. Don't be nervous. Okay. So, anyway, but, you know, I uh, recently... Um, this is gonna, okay, I, I'm, I'm being transparent, you know. My little, this finger was hurting me. And that's really my prophet's finger. I didn't think about that till now. But it was hurting me all around the nail. And you know what we usually do in these little minor things? We go, ah, just what is that? You know, just a tiny little thing. No, that's part of my body. Okay. And so I just said, all right, that is wrong. I'm not going to. And you know what the doctor told me? It was a very rude thing he said. I don't know if your doctor's ever told you rude things, but my doctor was very rude. He goes, oh, it's arthritis. I I am not receiving that. The next thing I did was, do I need to forgive anybody? You know, anyway, that's another story. I don't know why I'm saying that so much tonight. Anyway, so uh, it's healed, okay? It's healed. (laughs) And then... Some of you may know, um, I'm a classical pianist. And so I, I was having so much pain in my hands that I could, almost couldn't open the door. And I went to the doctor and he told me another rude thing. He said I had arthritis in my thumbs. I go, I am not receiving that. Okay, I am just not receiving that. God called me to play the piano. I'm gonna play the piano and I'm healed. I am completely healed. I want to tell you, healing is the children's bread. God has called us to be healed. Not a part of us, the whole body. Head to toe, stem to stern, up to down, every part of our body. So don't let Satan come in and begin to wound you and hurt you. Now that's a revelation that I have had personally. Now, I know some of you in the morning, you may have to do the healing Macarena. Have you ever done that? (laughs) It takes a little longer sometimes to get all the body parts together. (laughs) And you know, some people actually believe that, that that suffering, like you hurting is God allowing you to suffer. Okay, then don't go to the doctor. Just let your body suffer. That is so ridiculous. You know, when your body, your physical body starts hurting, do you know it begins to try to heal itself? Now, I had a revelation today when I was studying. How much more should we, the body of Christ... If somebody is sick among us, that we say, that's not just an attack on you, that's an attack on me, because I am part of your body. I'm just going to let that sink in, because I felt the Holy Spirit behind that one when I said that. You see, we are the body. 
And God wants us to walk in healing and health. I know I gave a word to our church, um, Trinity Church in, in Texas, part of uh, Dallas, South Dallas, that we were a cancer-free zone. And boy, did we get challenged. But all of a sudden, what happened? We started having success after success. People started getting healed of cancer. But it wasn't at first. We had some losses. But I tell you, we are rising to a new level of faith. And I want to say, and I want to prophesy over King's Cathedral, you are coming into a moment, and this is for the whole, all, all of the extensions. The Lord says, am I not coming to heal my body? Am I not coming to begin to release power evangelism? Am I not beginning, am I not coming to release dramatic, notable miracles in your midst and the Lord says believe me to do great things because I'm a great God Woo, clap your hands again Colossians 1, 16 and 18. For by him all things were created in heaven and earth, visible and invisible. He is over all. What we see, what we don't see, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things created through him and for him. Now this is going somewhere. I want you to pay attention. He is before all things. Oh, I love these all things verses. In him all things consist. He's the head of the body, the church, us, who's the beginning of the firstborn from the dead. Now listen to this, that in all things, it said all things at least three times, maybe four. I think it's four in this passage. Does he mean all things? Does he mean everything in your body? Does he mean everything in our body? Say amen. amen. Now why? That he may have the preeminence. Whoa. I looked up preeminence, all surpassing to the point that nothing is impossible. He is preeminent over your body. He is preeminent over your finances. He is preeminent over any other gods that shall be named, both in heaven and earth. He is preeminent over principalities. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is almighty. He is all surpassing. There is no one that is preeminent like our God. Say amen. Hallelujah. Then we need to act like it. Oh, that was the prophet's side of me, you know. <laughs> Just had to throw that in there, you know. Listen, I would have been so convicted by God that I have not been aggressive enough in believing the Word of God. I have not been aggressive enough and believing that he was and is the healer. I have not been aggressive enough. I'm confessing my sin to you. I have not been aggressive enough in believing that I can walk in healing and health. We wait till there's a crisis, and then suddenly we get aggressive when we get the cancer uh, word or something like this. No, he wants us to walk in divine authority. Just like the physical body starts to try to mend itself, we have create, are created to be supernatural temples of the living God. We are called to be supernatural. The preeminent one lives in me. The preeminent one wants to manifest through me. The preeminent one wants to manifest through you. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. It lives in me. There is not one smaller in you that is in me. We have got to get aggressive we have got to take on and say I'm gonna have faith and you said well Cindy yeah this happened and this happened well I want to tell you I don't understand some of those mysterious things but one thing I do know is the Bible is true one thing I do know that Jesus bore stripes for me. One thing I do know is that healing is in the atonement. One thing I do know that Jesus Christ will heal me if I believe. I am going to have faith. We have to have faith for the supernatural. We have to have faith and then we have to go everywhere, every day to everyone, everywhere, every day to everyone.
God, say that with me. Everyone, everywhere, every day. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. I preached the thimble full of this message, but I think you get the point. Did I have the musicians come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say to you, come on, we can't be lazy Christians. I, I, okay, I'm confessing my sins. Conf God is not being easy on me tonight. Okay, the Lord showed me I was having a lot more faith in Advil than I did in, in him. Oh, oh, oh. Did that hurt? Oh, a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. Okay, just close your eyes. <laughs> Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed, Cindy. Yes, I know. Holy Spirit, you're very active here tonight. Thank you, Lord. Creator, create right now. The Lord is healing L4s and L5s right now. I see someone, you have neuropathy in your feet, and the Lord is healing your feet right now. I see someone that uh, your blood work just came back all messed up, all kinds of things. The Lord said, I shed my blood so that your blood could be whole. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for healing. I break every curse sin against you. I break every curse of witchcraft. I break every word curse where people have been cursing you with their words. I break those curses in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak health and healing over you. I break every generational curse. I break the curse of early death. People have been have died early in your family. I break the curse of betrayal and sabotage that has caused you to be betrayed and your father to be betrayed and your family and your grandparents and your great-grandparents and I break that curse off you right now and I say it's broken it's gone it's over with long life you will be satisfied God has given you long life don't believe the laws of the evil one listen some of you with the accuser is speaking to you oh you're gonna die or this is gonna happen I want to say to you don't line up with the accuser don't listen to to his voice. The accuser of the brethren has been cast down. Believe the voice of the Holy Spirit. Ooh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, yeah, some there's so many through you're beginning to feel a warmth in your body. Yeah. Yes, yeah, someone, you're feeling electricity in your hands. Just lift up your hands to the Lord. You're feeling if you need any kind of healing. Thank you, Lord. Old football injuries are being healed. Someone's knee is really messed up, and the Lord is healing your knee. There's someone that you have arthritis in your, actually, or bursitis in your shoulders, and the Lord is healing that bursitis. All that pain is leaving. There's someone else you have ringing in your ears. The Lord is healing that. That ringing is leaving your ears. Somebody else you have sinusitis. You will be healed in Jesus' name. There's somebody else you have terrible allergies. And I rebuke the spirit of infirmity behind those allergies. And I break that in your bloodline. You got it from your family, but you don't have to keep it. Because you got a big daddy, the God of heaven. Heaven, who is preeminent his preeminence he is preeminent over all so I speak healing and I speak health to you somebody you have TMJ the Lord's healing you in your jaw TMJ somehow you open and close your jaw and it clicks and the Lord has given you new structure in your jaw someone you have uh, bone loss in your in your teeth like uh, literally your teeth are loose who is that loose teeth loose teeth Come on, where are you? Loose teeth. Oh, there's probably three of you that have loose teeth. There we go. There we go. I see two. Where's the third over here? If you're around, could you put your hand up, please, so they can pray for you. Yeah, if, you, if they have their hand up around you, loose teeth. Just pray for them. When you lay hands up, remember we practice. You had hands. Put hands on them. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing. Someone, someone, you have glaucoma. The Lord is healing you from glaucoma. The Lord, some of you, there's someone here with hepatitis C, and the Lord is healing your liver. With long life, you'll be satisfied. Uh, so there's someone that, that the doctor said that they could give you a certain pill for hepatitis C, but, but you don't have the money, but the Lord is healing you anyway. Someone's liver is being healed. Someone used to be heavy into drugs and, and alcohol here, and it practically destroyed your liver. You are being healed right now. The Lord can heal you. The Lord can heal you from all those stupid things you used to do. And the Lord is healing you right now because he's a great and mighty God. Can we clap our hands? I love you guys. Come on, be aggressive. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is my healer. All the body parts. The Macarena healing in the morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Everyone, every day, everywhere, everyone, every day, everywhere. Come on, can we say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Come on. That is awesome. Everyone, everywhere, every day. Man, I want you to just grab a seat real quick, if you can, if you can. And we're going to take a moment right now to sow into Cindy's ministry. What a powerful word. Ushers are going up and down the aisle. If you need an envelope, keep track of your giving record. Everything that comes to into this offering will go into Cindy's ministry and what God's doing in their life and it is our it's our passion as a church to make sure that we care for those who God entrusts to this house and uh, we want to take an opportunity to bless her but also to sow into this message how many of you have some family members that need to be saved uh, lift your hand how many of you guys have some family members that need to be saved I know this sounds different and maybe a little strange, but if I were you, I would sow into this word. You say, well, pastor, why is that? It's, am I paying for their salvation? No, no. This isn't indulgences. It's because by faith, she spoke a message that will begin to do a work in you. It's a faith thing going, I'm, you know what? I'm believing my family's going to be saved. I'm going to sow a seed of faith into even this word. So I praise God for that. What a powerful message. But hey, you know what? I, I just want to say this while people are, uh, while ushers are going up and down the aisle and go ahead and write, if you're writing out a check, write your checks out to Casey or King's Cathedral. And um, you can give, you can give all the intuitive prompts on the screen. You can also give, but. Cindy doesn't even know this. We didn't even talk about this before service, but, um, you know, this month, as we're doing our fasting and praying, we are initiating a, a movement or a campaign called Walk the Block. And what we're doing is every, we're encouraging every day for people to just walk their block and pray for their neighborhood, pray for healing. And then in September, after the power conference, we're doing a campaign. Now, how many of you guys remember last year, August, we did a prayer walk Maui, and that was fun. I think we walked 160 miles of this island and prayed. Uh, even in the midst of the fire, it was crazy, and God did some profound things. Can I tell you, it was almost like God was calling us to pray because he was getting us ready. He was getting us ready for that, to that fire, and it was in that season. And uh, we wouldn't have been able to do what we did. But in the month of September, we're going to be doing something called Miracle Walk Maui. And we're going to, those who participate, what we're going to do is we used to do something called Every Home for Christ. We're going to just take our blocks. We're going to get with people. And we're going to go to every house we can and believe God for miracles. We've had people healed in their homes. We've had people saved. And it's going to be powerful. So she doesn't even know how prophetic this word is but get ready i think god's telling us something <laughs> she's all you're welcome well hey are you guys ready let's sow into this word sow into cindy's ministry father we thank you so much for this word that has captured our hearts or that you were doing a work in us that you're getting us ready for what you're about to do 
Lord, there is going to be a revival in this house. We are on the verge of revival. And it's not just an outpouring of the Spirit, but Lord, it is the coming forth of the harvest. The balconies are going to be filled every service. Every seat, this place is going to be to capacity. It's going to be standing room only in the name of Jesus. Family members are going to be saved. Families are going to be reconciled. And so, Lord, we thank you for this word. Bless the Jacobs. Bless their ministry, everything they put their hands to in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give. still do courage tonight how are you full of faith tonight you know the most important thing and I'll just be real we can hear a word we can even get healed but the most important thing that can happen here tonight is for people to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior can I tell you the greatest work that Jesus did on planet earth Jesus healed people he healed the blind the lame he even raised the dead. But the greatest work that he did was on that cross where he paid the price and the penalty for our sins so that we could, our sins could be forgiven and we could be reconciled unto God. That we could have a relationship with the Lord. That the weight of shame and guilt that we've been carrying because of sin, we could be set free and we could be forgiven and healed and tonight, if you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm sick and tired of carrying that weight of shame and guilt and condemnation. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be 100% sure. And listen, this is more. I need you to hear this. I'm not selling you fire insurance. This is a relationship with Jesus Christ. But one of the promises that we receive is eternal life with him in heaven. But can I tell you, the Bible makes it very clear to us that if we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Friends, that burden can be lifted. Your sins can be forgiven tonight. You can leave this place free. You can leave this place forgiven. I don't know about you, but that sounds like good news to me. And if you're here and you say, Pastor, I want my sins to be forgiven. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. I want a relationship with him. I want to know his voice. I want to walk and talk with him, just like how Pastor Cindy said. And I want that assurance of eternal life. Pastor, will you pray for me? If that's you on the count of three, you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to receive a free gift of salvation. If that's you on the count of three, you lift your hand so I can pray for you. Ready? One, two, three three right now all over this house if that's you i see that hand i see that hand i see that hand i see that hand awesome 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 i see that hand right there awesome wonderful 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 i see that hand there can i invite you to say this prayer with me but before we do if you're here and you've been a christian for a long time 
But maybe you have a secret sin or an addiction. Maybe there's some things in your life you say, man, Pastor, I just, I'm sick and tired of living with this. I want to be set free. If that's you, I want to invite you to say this prayer with me as well. It's a prayer of repentance and it's a prayer of faith. All over this house, will you say this prayer with me tonight? Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. Give me a new mind and a new heart. Put your spirit within me. Jesus, lead my life. Give me a desire for you. A desire for your word. A desire for your church. Jesus, I believe that you died for me. That you paid the price and the penalty for my sin so that I can be free, healed, and forgiven. Jesus, I believe you are the risen Lord. And I surrender my life to you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Amen. Can we give Jesus some praise in this place? Hey, I want you to do something for me. Before I close in prayer, I want you to look at that person next to you and say, you are powerful. Come on, just tell them, you are powerful. Hey, I want all of you to just look at me for a moment. Can I tell you one of, the, one of the things that the devil does not want? He's scared for you to find out how powerful you are. Be bold this week. Be courageous. Walk in the power of the Spirit. Watch and see what God's going to do. How many say, Pastor, I want to be used by the Lord this week? Come on. Let's try that again. How many say, Pastor, I want to be used by the Lord this week? Will you lift your hands to the Lord? Come on, let me pray a blessing over you. Father, I declare strength and might and power, boldness and courage. I rebuke every spirit of fear, every spirit of intimidation that may come against your people, that they will walk by faith and not merely by sight, that they will walk by the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, that they will be powerful people. Lord, that you'll use them mightily for your glory. I declare that this week they're going to see miracles. I declare that this week they're going to experience your power and your presence in their lives. And I declare divine appointments and crazy favor. God bless you. We love you.